uh, Jack Chick gave this as a kind of a metaphoric look of what Satan is doing every moment of every day. He is seeking to devour this world. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that if you ever saw Satan, he would actually look like that. <laughs> but it does mean that that's, in a sense, what he looks like on the inside, as we would say, and his intent. And Paul calls him the God of this world. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I want you to uh, read that with me. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the gospel, if it's hid, it's only hid to those who are lost. This phrase here, the God of this world, who has blinded those who do not believe the gospel, that is a reference to Lucifer. And of course, we have many different names through the Bible given to him. Satan, uh, of course, I mentioned Lucifer is the name uh, that we'll be referring to him with this morning, but Satan or Lucifer or the devil, those are the three most often used. Then he's referred to as the dragon. He's referred to as the serpent. Of course, that takes you back to Genesis 3. The dragon, you'll see more of that in the book of Revelation. He's called the prince and power of the air. We'll look at that in a, in a few minutes. The adversary, uh, the wicked one, the tempter. These are all uh, either names or description, descriptive names of this same creature uh, known as uh, Lucifer, as we talked about this morning. Now you'll notice in that picture, again, this is a Jack Chick rendering, this thing here has wings. Why is that? He was one of the cherubs. He's a fallen cherub. He's not a fallen angel. Technically, he's not a fallen angel, he is a fallen cherub, and the cherub have wings. Now, notice that what uh, this God of this world, what his modus operandi is, what they call his mode of operation, or what you might call standard operating procedures if you're military, uh, SOP, he wanted to be like the Most High. You'll find that in Isaiah 14, 14. That's what got him demoted. But what's his promise to you? The same promise he gave to Eve in Genesis 3, 5, ye shall be as gods. So just keep that in mind every time Oprah Winfrey tells you you can be like a god, she's a minister of Lucifer. Oh, amen. Every time, we're going to talk about some of these that are preaching this doctrine that you can be as a god, Kenneth Copeland. You don't have a god in you, you are one, end quote. That's his quote. He's a minister of Lucifer. Uh, Benny Hinn has taught, taught people that they are little gods. He's a minister of Lucifer. He is promising the same thing Lucifer promises and as Lucifer promised Eve in the garden when he appeared as a serpent. Do you see these symbols on bumper stickers and t-shirts and everything? One I saw, they actually make them look like they spell out the word coexist. And at the bottom it says, God is too big to fit into one religion. You know that's true? The God of this world. Now the true God is the God of Christianity. So when you see that, you understand that it's not really a lie. You just have to understand it in the proper context that the God of this world is too big to fit into one of those religions. All religions, I said sort of when I'm saying this, are all paths. You hear this? All paths lead to God. It says all paths except Bible-believing Christianity are united in rejecting Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven. All those religions we saw in that previous um, screen, including the cross, the religions of the cross have become apostate. So even the liberal Christianity, Roman Catholicism, Orthodoxy, they all fit into that as well. 
All paths except Bible-believing Christianity are united in rejecting Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven. And all paths except Bible-believing Christianity do lead to the God of this world. So there you go. A lot of these things you see are truisms, but you've got to understand them in context. All paths lead to God? Yes. All paths outside of biblical Christianity lead to the God of this world. We need to establish the fact that Lucifer, as the God of this world, um, he is the God of idols. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 20-21, he's basically saying when a person prays to a statue, a saint even, spirit guide, an angel... They are worshiping devils. What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. See, there's a false teaching that I've heard from good, good men that uh, otherwise uh, pretty sound teaching, but they'll say that worshiping uh, idols, you're just worshiping nothing. It's 19 and 20. Oh, I had the wrong verses. All right, it's 19 and 20. Um, they're, they're, I've heard men teach that uh, when someone offers something to an idol, they're wasting their time because there's nothing there. Well, that's not really true. Paul says there is something there. It's just not what you think. If it's offered to an idol, you are offering it to a devil or devils who are representative of Lucifer. And so there you have a lot of people on planet Earth right there involved in Lucifer worship just by that very one thing we established. Think of this as well. When your favorite, I say unsaved, obviously celebrity or unsaved apostate reverend, when they pray or thank a god without a name. They're praying to and praising Lucifer. There is this standard practice. They're trying to build a civil religion that will eventually be assumed by the Antichrist. And they call it a civil religion, meaning like civil in the sense of civil service and civil uh, relationships in, in, in the world. That when you pray, and they, they teach this in the seminaries, that uh, when you, as a pastor, if you're asked to pray in front of Congress or some group outside of your local church, that you should just pray in your holy name, amen, and not mention the name of Jesus. Well, the Bible has something to say about that. And there is one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. It is not just in some generic God reference. And this is very dangerous because what you're going to find if you do your homework, a lot of these people referring to God with just G and not with Jesus' name, they are actually involved in Lucifer worship. And you're going to find that when you do your homework. And some of the folks I say consciously, but some do it unconsciously. But either way, if you're not praying to God in Jesus' name, you're praying to the other, only other alternative. And that's the key, is there's only one other alternative. What did Jesus say about people rejecting Him? A lot of people make this differentiation falsely, and they'll say, well, Jesus rebuked the religious people and was friends with sinners. And that is not what happened. When you read the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you read the Gospels, Jesus confronted those who had not been confronted. They, he confronted them with the truth about who He was. When they rejected Him, then they became a part of the world, in His view. And He referred to them as being children of the devil. And people will say, well, this is only referring to the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's not. It was to all who knew and still rejected Him that they then proved themselves to be children of the devil and remained so until or unless they repented and believed the gospel. John 8, 44 is where I get this, where He said, Ye are of the father, your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. The world, the reason the world is so caught up in sex, 
and greed materialism is because they are the children of Satan. And they are serving their father and they are acting like their father. Every once in a while my girls will fly off the handle a little too quick or get frustrated and you know, frazzle and I'll say, Stop acting like your father. I'm talking about me. I mean, <laughs> not the devil. I was, I knew where you thought I was going. I had a couple of ladies in here look at me like, what? <laughs> talking about me. Why? Because it's the way it is. You, you, you tend to, especially if your father's raised you, you tend to act like your father. Well, out in the spiritual world, these people are so materialistic and godless and full, full of lust and, endor and endorsing this whole amoral sense that sex is just okay as long as it's consensual no matter what, you know, and that is because that's how the devil operates. And that's why they operate that way. Well, Jesus puts them all under Lucifer. And that's a fact that Christians have been in denial about for decades. I have observed this in, the li in my lifetime, that this very fact that there's only two choices, either the God of the Bible or the God of this world, that's the fact. And yet, most Christians you talk to today are in complete denial of that. And many will say, well, they're not a Christian, but, uh, you know, they're, they're good people, and I think they'll be in heaven. You know, God will have... No. Well, let's consider the Bible facts here real quickly. Um, when Jesus spoke of this world in John 12, 31... John 12, 31, Jesus said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. This world are the unsaved. The unsaved world. And Jesus said that Lucifer is their prince. So if you don't like my, if it ain't Jesus, it's Lucifer attitude, you're going to have a problem with Jesus because that's how he cuts it. Mm -hmm. Jesus cut it just like that. And that's the only reason I do. It's not intuitive for us to, to believe what I'm teaching this morning. The intuitive thing is to say there's good, there's bad, and then there's some gray area. That's intuitive. That's what I would teach if I were not to have the Word of God. I'll admit it. I'd be teaching all kinds of error if I didn't subject myself to that Bible. I would be up here telling you that, I guarantee you. But that's not how Jesus taught it. So that's not how we're going to teach it. In Matthew 25, 41, Lucifer is said to basically be over all the... Uh, fallen angels, Nephilim, demons, devils, and that her hell was prepared for them. Amen. Not for you. Mm -hmm. Again, choosing to be blind, you choose to go to hell. God doesn't send anybody to hell other than the devil and his angels. That was, he, he had a home prepared for them. And he's ready to send them there. But if you go to hell, if any human being goes to hell, you have chosen to go to hell. Matthew 25, 41. Read that with me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now I always have to point out how interesting it is that it's the left wing. The left wing that goes... But anyway... Um, <laughs> I didn't write it. He said those on the left. Okay. <laughs> but uh, notice that last phrase there. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. His angels. He is Lord, God with a small g, Lord with a small l, over all those angels that have rebelled and I believe will still rebel according to Revelation chapter 12. 